Do y'all remember this post? Well, if you don't, the Arizona Wildcats football team last year was so desperate that they held open walk-on tryouts in the middle of their season. At the time, they had lost 17 straight games, which went all the way up to 20 games before they beat Cal 10-3 on a last-minute touchdown and then proceeded to lose the rest of their games. I could go on and on, but needless to say, they were pretty bad. But what if I told you that this upcoming season, the Wildcats could surprise the entire nation and be something that they haven't been in a minute? Competitive. Despite their seemingly downward trajectory, Jed Fish and Arizona are on pace to officially be back with a stacked recruiting class, key transfers coming in, and a young, moldable roster. My name is Kevin Redfield from the Dropout Sports, and let's get right into it. Well, not right into it yet. Just beforehand, if you could like this video and sub to the channel, it would mean so much to me, Cody, and Greg. All right, now we can get back into it. For brevity's sake, I won't dive into Arizona's lead up to this point too much, but I will give some key points. In 2018, when Kevin Sumlin was brought into Tucson, the thought was that he could continue the offensive spark that came the year before with the emergence of Khalil Tate and everybody on the offense. He did it with Case Keenum in Houston, and he especially did it with Johnny Manziel in Texas A&M. But for whatever reason, the pieces didn't fit together for Arizona. His first year didn't go great, but in his 5-7 and seven season, there were multiple games, including the last one against Arizona State, that were decided by one score or less. It was the next season, though, that the wheels truly started to come off. The team started strongly with a 4-1 record, with two of their first wins coming against Pac-12 opponents. But that last game they won would be their last for about two whole years. They ended that season, Khalil Tate and J.J. Taylor's last seasons, with a 4-8 record, losing seven in a row. Tate had his lowest quarterback rating and total yardage since his freshman year, and the team was blown out by more than two scores in most of their losses. The 2021 pandemic season didn't go any better for them, as they went 0-5, and after a 70-7 loss to Arizona, their worst in program history, Sumlin was let go. During that time between Sumlin's firing and the next coach's hiring, there were multiple names thrown out there as candidates. Former Texas Tech quarterback and offensive coordinator Graham Harrell, San Jose State head coach Brent Brennan, and even Steve Sarkeesian were all names that were being thrown around there. But the man that they got to run the Wildcat program actually hadn't been in the college game for a long time. And his name is Jed Fish. Fish had a long resume with multiple experiences to back him up. He had been in virtually every job imaginable in the NFL from quality control to offensive coordinator. And he even had some experience at the college level with a select few years as well. But he hadn't coached in college since 2017 at UCLA. So the hiring wasn't the most predictable. His first season last year was less than ideal, being one of only four teams to win only one game. But to be completely blunt, the odds were stacked against them from the start. A good amount of players had transferred away from the program, and the recruiting class Fish was working with was one of the weakest in program history. Because of the coaching change, players flipped their decisions, and the new coach didn't have a chance to go and get his guys. So literally no one on the team had any experience with Jed Fish. The stage was set for something that was really rotten tomato worthy. But despite what it looks like, I want to shed some light on the Wildcats 2021 football season. Their interconference schedule was pretty tough compared to other schools, with the only teams that they didn't play being Stanford and Oregon State. Their out-of-conference teams were also legit, with BYU and San Diego State University both having double-digit win seasons, and Northern Arizona... Yeah, we don't talk about Northern Arizona. The offense played about as good as they did in 2020, but they committed fewer turnovers per game and were dealing with a multitude of injuries and depth chart changes. The defense, on the other hand, improved a lot. Despite allowing the third most points out of any team in the Pac-12, they were middle of the pack in terms of yards allowed, and actually had the second fewest passing yards allowed in their conference. 
All of these facts culminate in a stat that shocked me when I first heard it. Arizona had four games, including their 38-15 loss against Arizona State, where they gained more yards than their opponent, but ended up losing. Just to put that into a little bit of perspective, if the Wildcats were able to cap off drives and hold teams to miracle touchdowns, we could be talking about a 5-7 football team. Alright, with that out of the way, it's time to look towards the future and see what the 2022 Arizona Wildcats have to offer. And what I can say for sure is that they will be better. The defense is going to be the big question mark, as they are losing a good amount of key starters and leaders, notably Anthony Pandy. But some of the recent transfer acquisitions such as Taiwali E. Savea, Anthony Solomon, and DJ Warnell look to come in and fill those gaps better than they were left. The offense is where the most improvement is needed, and it looks like that improvement is going to come in some future and current stars. The two headliners of the 2022 transfer class are former first-team All-Conference USA receiver Jacob Cowing and 2022 Pac-12 Offensive Freshman Player of the Year Jaden Delora. Cowing was the prayer that the Wildcats desperately needed after losing most of their starting receiving core. His 19.6 yards per reception last year provide both a deep threat and an ability to throw short to a reliable ankle breaker. Delora, on the other hand, might not have the starting position on lock, but his experience on a winning team that had multiple roadblocks makes him a surefire candidate for the starting position, at least from an outsider's perspective. Sure, he does have some question marks around him with the whole suspension thing, but the fresh start at Arizona under former quarterbacks coach Jed Fish, I think is going to do him wonders in making him a star player. I also want to bring up this year's recruiting class for Arizona, which is utterly historic. According to 24-7 Sports, their high school recruiting class is ranked 22nd in the nation, which is actually second in the Pac-12. Keep in mind, this is Jed Fish's first year being the head coach and getting his guys for a recruiting class. And it's the best one they've had in over 15 years. Think about it. Last year, they had one of the worst programs in history. And this year, they have one of the best. We could see a lot of these guys making their names known in college football and even starting in their first year. The guys at the top all come from those big-time California schools, you know, St. John Bosco, Bishop Almaney. But the headliner of this class that could make waves as soon as this year is Tatiro T-Mac McMillan. Earning the California Gatorade Player of the Year in football, McMillan shined both as a receiver and as a corner, having over 1,300 yards and 18 touchdowns on offense, as well as having eight picks on defense. He and his fellow 2022 Wildcat class are a sign that Arizona is coming back, not just from mediocrity, but to a place of potential stability. Call me an optimist or just call me a straight up lunatic, but in my crystal ball, the Arizona Wildcats could definitely be competing for a Pac-12 South title very, very soon. I know they have competition to worry about like Utah and USC, and I never try to undersell or spit on any player, coach, or program without just cause. But some of those teams may just have too lofty of expectations, and others just aren't built like Arizona is this year. If we're talking purely about next year, title or bust, then you're gonna be pretty disappointed. But if we're playing the long game and using trajectory to see where the Pac-12 is headed, then I can easily see Arizona being one of those top competitive teams vying for a top 25 position and being there for the conference championship. They've got weapons, they've got classes, and they've got room to improve. Now, it's just time to see what they can do. Thank y'all for watching. Just a bunch of dropouts. <laughs>